Howdy folks, welcome to Vindicta. If you're not familiar with Vindicta, it is an open world guerrilla warfare mode for Arma 3. And we're gonna jump in here and create a new game. Now, unfortunately the uh, development has stopped on this a couple of years ago, uh, but it's, it's a really good mod. And I think there's enough playability here that we can have some fun with it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and delete this old one. I was going to do. We're going to go create a new game. Now I'm going va mostly vanilla here. You can do a lot of different factions, um, as you'll see. I'm going to throw YouTube on the save name here. Uh, game mode. There was originally planned to be multiple different game modes, but we only have Civil War right now. So similar to like Andy Stasi, you start out uh, with just yourself, and you try to take over the island from the occupying faction. So we can pick the military faction and the police faction and the civilian faction. Um, the only thing I'm going to change is we're going to use DLC for the police. And if you come down here, it says hover. So this is standard police, but also use stuff from Apex, Laws of War, and the Contact DLC. So this gives a little bit of a variety. Uh, you can do lots of different factions for the military. I'm going to just go AAF. And you can see in the red shows you all the different mod sets you can use. So you can get a lot of different things going on here. We're going to stick to pretty standard though. And then for civilians, it's just regular Alta civilians. Now, since I'm playing solo, I'm going to go ahead and set the enemies at outpost percent to 50%. So this is the initial amount of enemies at occupied outposts. Now that doesn't mean they won't get reinforced with more numbers, but they're going to start half full. And then the occupied outpost default 35%. So 35% of possible outpost locations on the island will be occupied at the start. And what the enemy will do is they'll try to send out reinforcements and they'll, they'll start building up over time. And what's really neat is they'll start actually adding on to the outpost as well. Like they, they initially own the airfield on the island. And there's not much there to begin with, but they'll start building up fortifications and more towers and stuff as the fight progresses. So it's a pretty cool dynamic world. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and hit start. And it's gonna do some computation here real quick. Sounds like it's raining. I might wanna turn that off. All right, so looks like we're starting out kind of on the west side here. And we've got this overview on, which shows all these towns here are neutral. They're, they're not influenced by me. They're not influenced by the enemy. That's the way it starts out. So our job is to basically gain influence by talking to the citizens, uh, killing off police, blowing up the police stuff, fighting soldiers, that kind of thing. So before we get started, I'm going to put, put a timestamp in the description here. I'm going to go over and talk about the mod set I'm using. Then we'll get started. I wanted to go over my mod list real quick. Now, this is the mod list as of the first uh, video. It may change over time. But I'll try to keep the link in the description updated. We'll just run through these real quick, and I'll just give a brief explanation. You're probably familiar with most of them. Uh, but we got Ragdoll Physics Plus. Uh, it just makes the Ragdoll for uh, dead bodies a little better. Not quite as goofy. Uh, Ace, you're probably all familiar with. Advanced Combat Environment. Uh, Vindicta relies on that a lot for the in-game systems. And I've got some tweaks to that in the settings, but it's pretty much just regular old Ace. Uh, advanced Developer Tools is just in case I need to troubleshoot. It has advanced scripting capabilities. All-in-one com command menu deluxe I use in a lot of my series. And that just gives you an extra squad command menu with a lot better options. It's a little better organized than the default. Uh, better inventory is just what it says. It's a better inventory. It shows you all your containers, uh, uniform, vest, backpack, all on one screen. It's just all around better. Blast Core Mer Edition is a, it takes a little bit of a performance hit, but it makes the uh, explosions and stuff look a lot better. It does a lot of particle effects and that kind of thing. Uh, CBA is uh, just an add-on that's required by a lot of other mods. Cinematic lens flare, enhanced missile smoke, and some of these others. Real lighting and weather, splendid smoke rework. Those are all just to make the game prettier, look look better. 
also web knight flashlights uh enhanced movement and the rework just lets you vault a little better jump climb that kind of thing file xt is a uh save back end for save files required but not required but uh encouraged for use with vindicta this makes managing the save files a little better hidden passwords don't need to worry about that one it just it hides your server password when you're joining a server i forgot and left that on there uh improved creators i can't tell for sure if this is working but what this is supposed to do is use the new terrain deformation technology in arma uh, for large explosions like mortars and stuff it should leave a creator uh, in my testing i've had ieds and stuff go off and it didn't leave a crater so i don't know if this isn't working or if it just doesn't work with the ieds we'll find out improved grenades this takes the vanilla arma 3 grenades and just makes their blast radius and damage a little more realistic so you know no more tossing a grenade next to an ai and he just shakes it off uh grenades actually do quite a bit of damage GSRS sound mod, of course, uh, awesome sounds, just upgraded sounds for Arma in general. Now these next four, the lambs, uh, this comes with a huge caveat. Usually you don't want to use any kind of AI mods with uh, Vindicta or even the Anastasia overthrow, that kind of thing, because they do their own AI things. But what I've done is I've done a bunch of testing, especially with the lambs danger, and I've disabled certain things. Um, and it seems, it seems to mostly work. So what this does though, is it makes the AI, both my squad and the enemy AI, a lot smarter. Uh, they'll use cover, they'll dive to the ground, that kind of stuff. It just, it makes the survivability of my AI go way up. Then uh, Lamps RPG, that just makes them a little more aggressive about using their launchers. Uh, suppression, just has some suppression effects both on your AI and the enemy AI. So the suppression works a little better. Uh, turrets, this, helps with the uh like static guns so they're not just like laser beams it just it helps them be a little more realistic and a little more survivable uh looting enhanced i might be using this this is just an ace way to transfer loot from bodies and containers and vehicles back and forth uh no more aircraft bouncing it just makes aircraft wrecks and helicopter wrecks a little better they don't go bouncing off into the sky when they impact the ground uh, another uh sound mod for footsteps Real Engine, you can go read about that on Steam. It just it makes a lot of tweaks to the game uh, to make it better. I won't go over them all here. Uh, Real Light and Weather, just went through that. Remove Stamina. Eh, I go back and forth on Stamina. I like the Ace Stamina system, uh, but sometimes I just get tired of it. So, yeah, like it or not, I'm removing Stamina. I don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about Splendid Smoke Rework. Unit voiceovers just give some new voice lines uh, to you and your squad mates. File HUD lets me take screenshots. You can turn off the HUD, though it doesn't turn off the Vindicta stuff, so it's probably less useful here on Vindicta. Now you see here Vindicta Alpha. You can get that on the Steam Workshop. I need to update this. Um, I'm actually building using a local build of this, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. I guess here at the end I was going to do a separate segment, but. I've uh, enabled some experimental features in Vindicta that are that are disabled in the, the public build. So there are ambient missions. So when you're taking over town, I've got uh, saboteurs. So once you have influence of 30% in a town, there's a chance it'll start spawning uh, saboteurs, one or more, depending on the size of the town. And what they will do is they will spawn with IEDs and they'll try to go to the police station, or to the main road and they'll plant IEDs or they'll try to blow up police trucks or police buildings. And it just kind of adds to the general feeling of you're part of a revolution and the people are helping you out. And then I've also enabled militant civilians. So once you get influenced to 60%, uh, a small number of civilians will start spawning with a pistol and they'll start fighting back against the enemies. And what's cool is they'll actually, if they get the chance, they'll pick up gear from fallen enemies or even fallen friendlies. So they'll, so they'll grab a helmet or a better gun or a vest. And again, it just adds to the atmosphere of we're taking over this town and the AI actually helps you out. So that's pretty cool, but it is experimental features. And before you ask, I'm not gonna release this build, at least not yet. 
it's kind of hacked together and it mostly works, I think. Uh, at some point, if I get time, I might clean that up and push the code out uh, to GitHub. But we'll see. But anyway, just be aware that I am running a custom version of Indicta. So you may see things in the series you wouldn't necessarily get if you're playing the version from Steam Workshop. That's it with the mods. Let's get back to the game. Okay, I'm going to turn off the show overview here. And we're up here in Saint Saint Jean. I'm not sure if that's Jean or Jean. We'll go with Jean. <laughs> uh, this is our initial respawn point. We can always respawn here, basically, no matter what happens. And once we build camps around, you know, bases, or we take over areas, we can respawn there as well. You have that option. You can always come back here and respawn at your initial spot. Okay, we are spawned in, and I am undercover, and I think I'm going to turn the rain off. So I talked about in the mod overview, uh, my custom version of Vindicta. This is one of the custom things that I've added. There is a pull request out there on the GitHub for adding weather. Set that to no rain. Uh, by default, Vindicta just has like it's sunny all the time. So I thought it'd be interesting to have some weather. But I think for now, we're just going to leave the rain off. So we'll have a chance of clouds, but no rain for the get-go. So the downside of the random spawn system is I spawned in with sport clothes, which doesn't have a whole lot of storage space. So I've only got two bandages and three mags for my gun here. Normally, I would have more bandages and a lockpick because I'll need a lockpick at some point. Uh, but we did not get that because of our random spawn. So I'm going to kind of walk you through as we go here. This uses Ace, as I mentioned. So one of the things Ace gives is the holster functionality. So since I have my gun holstered through Ace, I'm undercover. You can see at the top there. And I can pull my gun out just by unholstering it. Now I'm overt with a weapon. So I want to put that away. You can see the meter changes. So if I'm jogging, I'm a little more suspicious. That's, that's kind of like your suspicion meter. If I start sprinting, I'm even more suspicious. If I'm accessing an inventory of something, my suspicion meter goes up. I hoping there might be a backpack in there. Uh, there's a lot of vehicles, and we can steal from these at will. There we go. Now see, this is a carry-all, but it's the hex pattern. So I have a suspicious outfit. So that makes me a little more suspicious. And it just kind of stacks up. And if you get your suspicion meter all the way full, you can go overt. And then, the, then you're basically kill on sight. Now, I believe that urban is considered military as well. There is like a coyote version of that. Actually, that had a radio. Let me go ahead and grab that. You can't actually hop in the vehicles, and then you're not suspicious at all accessing the inventory. Uh, we don't have a GPS. Just rifle through everybody's stuff. That's got the hex version. That does have a GPS, though, so we'll grab that. I'm going to take these glasses off, actually. So one thing we want to do is get influence, but I want to take a look at the map first. I don't know if we want to start stirring up trouble here or not. We may want to go somewhere else and stir up trouble. Ah, it's all the uh, it's all the military backpacks. So let's take a look at the map here, and I'm going to turn off the GPS. So this might not be too bad of a place to start stirring up trouble. Kind of off the beaten path. We need to talk to some citizens and start finding out uh, about stuff. So we can go talk to people. And there's there's all this. It's always the same standard options. Basically, have you seen any military activity? That'll tell you about police stations or outposts that they know about. Uh, any idea if the army is planning anything? That'll tell you about any patrols that they're aware of. And they're not they're not always aware of everything. And the intelligence, kind of like real intelligence, it's not always 100% accurate. Let's see. If we should get a big info dump here. About 
police stations and whatnot. And you'll get a little pop-up once you discover a location. So we're going to get lots of stuff here in our map now. These little green spots are police stations. You can see here, this is the police station. Make sure I'm on the police station. The large police station. And it can have a maximum of nine. And there's currently no soldiers there. So I could go take over that police station right now and claim it for my own. But I don't have any way to hold it. So there's not much point in doing that. All right. And then I'm just going to say bye. Don't want to stir up trouble just yet. So we're over here. We don't have too many options for vehicles. Let's take a quick run up here real quick. See another, at least one other car in the distance. Yeah, we got some more up here. Including a Jeep, so I might grab that Jeep. So this first episode, we're going to kind of get, get settled, get uh, the lay of the land. And maybe possibly look for a base location. You'll see I'm very suspicious since we're talking here. Let's see if he knows anything different than the other guy. He probably doesn't, but we'll just check. Yeah, we didn't discover anything new. Uh, I'm going to see if he knows about any patrols. Then we'll let him go. Yeah, he knows about some patrols, so that's good. All right, thank you, sir. I'll let you go. I'll probably end up taking this Jeep. The Jeep's a nice vehicle to have. And I don't think there's any penalty for taking vehicles. So you can see there, we've got patrols now. So if I bring up my map again, we've got this Intel, Intel panel, and you can turn that off. Uh, we've got a couple patrols we know about. So if we highlight this one, so they know about a patrol and it goes basically around here. So somewhere along this route is a patrol. They might be in this town. They might be on the road somewhere. They might be up here. You don't know where they are, but you do know there's a patrol. So that gives you a little bit of intel if you want to ambush them or just be aware of where they're at. This question mark means somewhere down here there's an outpost. It's probably up here. But they don't know exactly where it is. They just heard there's something over there. We have another patrol. And it looks like it's coming from the airfield. It's going around to these towns. So this might be a police patrol since it's localized. This is most likely a military patrol since it's coming from the main enemy base at the airport. While we're here... Give me a backpack, please. Even a salt pack would be fine. I just have to go with the suspicious one. All right, this is our new Jeep. What you got for me? Nope, just a carry-all. They do start full of fuel, which is nice. Check this car. Come on, backpack. There we go. We at least got an assault pack. Uh, and they've got some first aid kits, which is good. That gives us some morphine. And we're going to grab these extra bandages. There we go. And this takes a... Yeah, that's only used in the PM. So we always spawn with a pistol, or sometimes it'll give you a shotgun or something. But you don't need to worry about taking pistols. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the Jeep had a tool kit, but we'll take that. Just in case... This basic gear like this, yeah, it's actually got two tool kits in it. it. Most cars have, you know, the basics in it, so you don't ever have to worry about finding those. So let's go take a little drive around. Where, where do I want to start? I might want to start. It's a little off the road. It's not. I might want to start like down here. Possibly have a base down here. Because there shouldn't be any patrols down here because there's nowhere to go. It's a little bit off the beaten path.
Let's go check that out. So we need to go down and, and take a left and right. Let's get our GPS on. Go in the wrong direction. <laughs> Let's take a drive down there and we'll see what else we discover along the way. There's actually a repair truck up there. Interesting. We could use that at some point, but as you can see, there's a lot of vehicles around. What's cool? Look at this. Yeah, they get out of your way. Vindicta has a lot of great features. It's an amazing mod. But it is still Arma, so we'll get Arma at some point. Out of the way, fellas. We're coming through. So we'll res if we die, we'll respawn back here. One thing I want to do pretty quickly is go to a police station and steal the crates. So in every police station, there's two crates. And that'll have some basic like vests and weapons. More importantly, it's going to have construction resources, which is what we need to build a base. So once I have some construction resources, I can put down a camp. And then I can uh, respawn there. Put down an arsenal, start gathering up gear. That kind of thing. I'm going to take a right here. First Coke. Oh, yeah. And I don't remember if they... I don't think they put up roadblocks. They do have patrols out on the roads. I'm probably going to be just driving, so I will see you when we get down to the possible base location. Actually getting close to that circle there where it said there was an outpost. I think it's back over there. Oops. If we get close enough, we should discover it. I'm not sure if we'll get close. Yeah, there we go. Pretty sure it's that base over there. Yep, that's kind of what I thought. And I've played this in the past. I might have actually used that spot over there as a base before. You go way back on the channel, you'll probably find some Vindicta content. All right, I'm going to be heading towards the base location. But I'm also going to check uh, some of these cars for a good backpack. So I'll see you in a bit. Just wanted to show you real quick. Um, the police stations are determined like dynamically. Each time you start a new game. Uh, and it'll slap a police sticker on a building and that's the police station so we're not going to steal it yet but right there is one of the crates actually maybe i will steal it right now how much can i fit in here i'm not sure how much i can fit in my jeep we have to use the ace cargo oh, if i take the wheel out i can actually get both crates in there Let's just hope we don't have a flat tire. <laughs> Let me get this a little closer. Now, this is a little bit cheesy. I, I kind of wish this part was a little more nuanced. Because we can just waltz in there and drag those crates out in the street. And the police won't care if we're careful. So, I'm going to walk so I don't have any added on suspicion. You can see now I'm like at half full suspicion meter because I'm in a military area. I'm near the police station. Now what I can do is I can just walk in here. I can't carry it because it's too heavy. Item too heavy. But I can drag it. I can just drag this out in the street and load it up in my Jeep. <laughs> it's a little bit silly, but that's the way the mod works. Like I said, I wish it was a little more nuanced. Let's drop that there. Now we're going to take these over to our base location. So we'll actually get a base made in this video. That'll be good. Show you how the, the camp system works. 
Now, if these were empty or had a little bit of equipment in them, I could pick them up. They are quite full of stuff, which is good. Because another thing with Vindicta, um, you have to have weapons. You have to have a weapon to recruit troops. You can optionally give them a helmet and or a vest. And there's no unlimited weapons. Like, you have to have a weapon. So every little weapon matters. And we'll be pick, we'll be trying to pick back up weapons you know, from fallen comrades. Because we have to have those. You're limited in your recruits by uh, how much influence you have you know, per base, and as well as you have to have a weapon to recruit them. All right, see you later. Thanks for the stuff. <laughs> and I might actually tow this Jeep too here while, while we're at it. So for that, I'm gonna need some rope. Grab that. And I didn't realize until recently that Ace has a towing system. So we're going to use the ACE towing system. Attached to the, attached to the front. Oh, it's a Jeep. You got to have an attachment point there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Attached the tow rope. Beautiful. All right, let's see if we can get out of here without killing anybody. And it actually works pretty well. Like it. Turns the wheels and let's see if I can not flip this over. It actually works better than the advanced towing system that I usually use. These guys out of the street. Now these police trucks you can see alongside the road, they will have police gear like vests, first aid kits, and stuff like that. Ooh, there's an off-road. I'm seeing all the stuff I want to steal, but we need to we need to get settled first. All right, so we're going to take an extra Jeep down here with us. You never have too many cars, because we're going to be dying a lot. Woo! It's actually pulling a little funny. Oh, my goodness. Shouldn't have looked back there. <laughs> That's why it was pulling funny. That Jeep was all over the road. Uh, let's get our GPS back up. Is that where I needed to turn? No, it's the next road. So I like this Ace towing. It's actually fairly realistic. If you've ever flat towed a vehicle, you'll know how uh, goofy it can get. When I was testing this on another save, the truck kept rolling over. I was pulling it upside down and it was not pretty. Let's take this turn kind of slow. It's not all herky-jerky like the... Advanced towing mod. Actually feels like you're towing a vehicle. It's pretty cool. So we've got some defilade here. That's good. Now eventually the enemy will have helicopters. Uh, and we can use camo nets to hide from the helicopters. For now we just need to worry about uh, patrols. I think this will be far enough away back over here that... Shouldn't have to worry, but let's get over here and we'll take a look around. Oh my goodness. Come on, Jeep. Hang in there. We're almost where we're going. <laughs> Maybe it's best just not to look back. Let's just pretend like everything's okay. This thing is pulling me all over the road, but it's okay. It's going to be okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know if it's the attach point I picked or what. That's pretty wild. Alright, I mean, this has got some walls up. It's got several buildings to use. This looks kind of promising. Got a nice parking area. Is it hidden from the enemy? That's the main thing. Alright, uh, let's see. We need to... Attach tow rope. Yep. I put that back in my inventory. Did. Let's throw that back in the Jeep. So I think this will be a good first base. There's no 
no patrols will be coming down this road because it's a dead end road. We've got, you know, defilade from the main road over there. So the closest point of approach is like here. You can see we've got we've got shelter from that. We've got a nice building here to use. I'm digging it. Let's let's make our base here. So how do we make a base? Well, let me show you. Uh, actually, I don't need to move the jeep. We'll be just fine right here. So we go into the cargo system, start unloading the boxes. Okay. That one. That one. Now I need, I think it's 20 building resources to claim and like create a base here. So if we pull up the menu, now I may occasionally say Y menu. By default, it's the U key that's like hard coded into Vindicta. But my U key is used by my all in one command menu. I've got tons of muscle memory to use U for this. So I changed my Vindicta so it's the Y key. In case you hear me say Y key, that's what I mean. Go to strategic, it'll randomly pick a name and we can make a camp or a roadblock. So when we make a camp, oh, it takes 30 construction resources. So if I just say create, you must have at least 30 build resources. Okay, so I have them in the crate. Don't have them in the backpack. I think, if I remember right, if you're looking at an inventory, it'll let you uh, use that. We drag this a little closer to the wall because I want the little camp thingy right here next to the building. Release that. Go to first person view. I think if I'm looking at this, I can build from it. Actor strategic. Camp Apollo. I think I'll just use the random name. Sure, why not? Create. There we go. So since I was looking at that inventory, it used the construction resources from there. You can see we've made Camp Apollo now. Look in this crate. You can see we got some basic weapons. I'll get us started. And we've still got 20 construction resources left because each one has 50. So that's cool. So it drops this little thing down. You can see I'm in a military area now because I'm in my own camp. If you look at location up there in the upper left, Camp Apollo. Now we have camp and I can respawn here. I can recruit troops here eventually. Let me see if I click here. See, we've got a an influence area. Or a sphere of influence. I'm not sure what you call it, but basically any town within this radius that we have positive influence in will start getting us X number of recruits. I have zero available recruits right now because we don't have any influence anywhere. We're just getting started. So I want to go to these towns and start getting them on my side, start recruiting people. But I, what I want to do now is I want an arsenal. So since, since I'm in my camp, I can use a scroll menu. I can say open build menu from location. Now we've got this build menu. We can put down tents, which increases your garrison capacity. Medical tents, you know, for healing yourself, repair, for repairing stuff. We want storage. Tab for the build. And I'm just going to put our... Oh, shit. Do I need the arsenal inside? I don't remember how the visibility mechanics work for enemies. Um, Let's just stick it, like, right here for now. We can always move it. Not enough resources to build. Okay. That's kind of what I expected to happen. What I can do is I can say attach to garrison. Now that box is attached to this garrison and I can use the construction resources from it. It should eventually update up there. There we go. Now we have 20 construction resources in this camp and it just so happens I need 20 to build this arsenal. Pick that guy and we're going to stick it right there. You can see how it's like at the little marker. That means we can pick it back up and move it too. So this is our arsenal. If I open that up, 
I know there's a, there's a lot going on here, but some of you are not familiar with Vindictus. So I'm trying to just cover all the basics. You see, we don't have any weapons or launchers. Uh, I've got my pistol on me. I have unlimited flashlights. One thing I can do is change my uniform, but I'm going to go ahead and load Vindictus starter. And it doesn't have everything, fortunately, but it, it's a start. All right, bolster that again. This is my default loadout that I use, except normally I have some stuff that I don't have right now. The racing helmets are free, and they give you just a little bit of ballistic protection. Uh, the track suit is also free, and it has a decent amount of storage. and also gives you, I think, a little bit of ballistic protection. because It's made for racing, I guess. So, let's get all our stuff put in the arsenal. So, we can do external inventory to arsenal. So that crate is empty now. External inventory to arsenal. That crate. That crate is also now empty. External inventory to arsenal. Take stuff from that Jeep. And we'll just get everything. That Jeep. I can attach these to the garrison or anytime I hop in and hop out. You get out of a vehicle, it attaches to your garrison and it to make sure it it will save. Although the world is fairly persistent. Like if I go back to where we came from, even after I've saved and come back in later, the same vehicles usually will be there. So if you see like that repair truck I saw earlier, if I went back there, it's most likely still there. All right, these are empty now, so I'm just gonna move them so they're a little more out of the way. We can use these later for gathering up gear. So I'm just going to stick them right here. I guess we want to use them later. And now we have a camp established. And let me see now if I have lockpicks and stuff. We should have got most everything. Yeah, we should have everything for my starting loadout now. Police crates. See, I've got a lockpick. Uh, that's used for police and military vehicles. They're locked. If you want to steal them, you have to lockpick them. We got our ace earplugs. Got some morphines. So we're ready to rock and roll. And I can actually throw that in my backpack. But one thing I found out with the Vindicta save system, it does not save weapons in backpacks. So don't stick anything in your backpack, weapon-wise, that you want to keep. And I looked into the code, and it doesn't look like it's easy to fix because the way it saves, I don't want to bore everybody to death, but... The way it saves is like a stream of join and place data. And yeah, it's just, it doesn't save weapons in your backpack. That's what you need to know. <laughs> All right. So we have Camp Apollo. Next episode, we're going to go out and we'll start getting some influence. Maybe hit up some more police stations. Just keep gathering resources, getting influence, and we'll plan our next move. So the save system, we're going to do a new save. These are my test saves. It's a nice, clean, quick save system. I really like Vindicta. And the code base, if you do any coding, oh my gosh, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> it's convoluted and complex, but it's beautiful. There we go. We are saved. I'll catch you in the next episode, folks. Thanks, as always, for watching. And take care.